Hey, I'm Evan, Head of Engineering for RM Stator. Today we're going to talk about how to test a voltage regulator rectifier. So this is going to cover um, the kind of standard basic style regulator rectifier. This is the most common um, for a three-phase stator. These generally have three yellow wires for the stator input. And then they'll have uh, usually a red and a green or a black for the battery output. Red is usually battery positive and green or black is battery negative. So um, this is not specifically for testing MOSFET regulators. Uh, the testing procedure is very similar and we'll mention what's different later on. Um, but uh, the results are slightly different. Anyways, uh, first we're going to talk about uh, basically what a voltage regulator rectifier is uh, and kind of how it works. So then when we explain how to test it, you understand what you're doing. So I'm not just saying connect this uh, wire to this wire and see what happens. Uh, you'll actually know how it works and what you're doing when you test it. So we have a diagram here on the whiteboard um, and we're going to talk about... Um, how this all works together. There's a couple functions inside of these and you've heard them called regulators or rectifiers, uh, voltage regulators. Well, they, they have uh, those two words in a rectifier and regulator because they perform two functions and they're both uh, critical to your battery charging system. So first we're going to talk about the rectifier side and then we'll talk about the regulator side. The rectifier side is what you can easily test on the bench with the regulator removed from the vehicle um, or you can test it um, on your motorcycle or ATV with it installed and you do not need the motor running. Uh, in fact, you do not want the motor running for this test. Uh, the regulator side we can only test with a running vehicle we have to have the stator producing power running into the regulator to see if it regulates correctly okay so what we want to know is what is the rectifier part and how to how what are we doing when we test it so this diagram hopefully is really simplified but will help you ex uh, understand what's happening and, and why you're testing it this way so we have a stator um, that is producing current it has three for this standard type we're talking about, it has three coils on it. It's called a three-phase stator. Um, and we're running that voltage uh, that's being produced by the stator into our regulator rectifier unit. So if you can see down here, I kind of drew a drawing. Stator, uh, stators are producing alternating current, which means the, the voltage being produced by the stator is going both positive and negative. So we can kind of see in this drawing, we've got uh, plus here, we can see that the wave is going positive and then it's going negative and that's because we have magnets that are producing the current inside the stator and these magnets have a north and a south pole so you're kind of think about it like pushing and pulling almost uh, you're pushing and per pulling current through the stator windings depending on which pole of the magnet is passing um, well that's all good but to charge a battery, we need what's called direct current. So we need to get rid of the negative portion of the wave or convert it all to a positive polarity so it can be passed on directly to a battery uh, in the format that a battery expects it and can use. Um, that's what the rectifier does. Uh, the rectifier is responsible for basically trimming the negative half of the current we don't want from the stator. Or in cases like this, which is called a full wave rectifier, which I'm not going to go into the details about, but we can actually use all this current uh, to charge the battery instead of just throwing away half of it. So what, uh, what happens is we have current being produced in the stator coils here, and I have the three wires from the stator coming in, and they attach uh, to points inside the rectifier, which is a circuit board in there, um, that are in between diodes. Now, uh, the diode is actually what we're testing when we bench test a rectifier. Uh, a diode is an electronic component, and it's drawn with an arrow like this with the line over it that indicates current can only pass in one direction. If we pass current the other direction, it will block it. It will not allow it through. So the upside of this is this component is perfect for what we want to do, which is basically only let current through in one direction, which is what our battery needs, and prevent it from going in the opposite direction, which would not be good for our battery. So, okay, great. Well, now we know that we have these diodes in here. These are called, it's called a, a diode bridge or a rectifier. Um, and we have our stator coils that connect inside between pairs of diodes. Okay, so you can see each coil is going to uh, a circle here in between two diodes that make up its rectifier. And that's where uh, the current from the stator will be flowing in between these guys. Um, now, this is the part we'll be concerned about for the testing, and I'll explain what we're doing when we test it in one second. The other pieces of this inside these units is the regulator, 
And I just drew this really simplified here. What the regulator function is doing is a separate uh, piece of electronics on the circuit board inside that is basically monitoring our battery voltage. And when we see the battery voltage going higher than what we want it to be, in this case it's generally 14.6 volts is our regulation point. What is happening is the regulator circuit is actually firing uh, switches inside, and these are called shunt switches. What these do is momentarily connect the stator coils to ground to the negative side of the system and bleed off stator current uh, to ground. So by doing that, we can then dissipate uh, that current as heat, which is why these regulators have heat sink fins on them. And in doing so, we'll pull down the voltage and not uh, allow our battery to overcharge. We'll, we'll basically direct current elsewhere to be dissipated as heat instead of passing it on to our battery. And the regulation circuit is fast and is switching these guys on and off as needed um, to keep the voltage where it should be. So we no, don't really need to worry about this for our bench testing, but that's kind of how the whole system works. You can see at the top here, all these diodes are connected together. The top side of this is our battery positive connection and the bottom side is our battery negative connection. Okay, so when we're testing um, a rectifier on the bench or on our bike, uh, we want to have the plug for the regulator accessible because we're going to need to connect to these terminals inside directly. And we need to know what the wire colors are at each terminal so we know how to make the connections. So your multimeter will have a function on it um, that is the diode testing function. A lot of times it's shared with one of the resistance settings and it looks just like one of these guys. Uh, it's a, basically a, a triangle with a line through it uh, that illustrates the diode. So what happens is uh, to do the diode test using our multimeter, we want to connect to either side of the diode. And if we connect our meter one way, Basically, the meter is putting a voltage across its two wires, uh, your two leads from your meter. If we connect it one way, pushing current in the forward direction, we should measure the voltage drop across this diode. Uh, your meter will show, so like for these type of diodes, generally the voltage drop is 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 volts. Kind of depends on your meter and exact diodes inside. Um, but we're looking for a number like that. Um, then what we want to do is test in the opposite direction. So we're going to flip our meter leads around. And if we are reversing the diode, trying to put voltage across it in the opposite direction, our meter should show an open circuit, a, a, a one with a decimal place away from it or an OL depending on your meter to indicate that the uh, current was blocked in that direction. Okay, so we know in this standard type of rectifier we have six of these diodes we need to test. And we know that we need to test each diode in both directions, in the forward and the backwards direction. In the forwards direction, we want to measure a voltage that's reasonable, half a volt, 0.6 volts. And in the backwards direction, we want to measure an open. So we know what we're doing now. How do we access each of these six diodes for testing? Well, if we look at the diagram, we can see from the wires that we have exiting the stator, or, I'm sorry, exiting the regulator, which in this example we have three yellow wires instead of the blue wires I drew. And we have a green and a red, which we have here. So if we look at this, we can actually access each of these diodes, all six of them, just with the five wires we have available on the regulator. Here's one, a red wire. Here's two, our green wire. And here's three, four, five are blue in this case, but yellow wires on the regulator. So if we set our meter to the diode function and we connect um, in every combination across these guys, we can measure e every single one of them. For instance, this guy would be between one of the blue, uh, well, yellow wires on our regulator and red. And in the opposite direction, we'd measure, we'd flip our meter leads and measure between red and blue. And then we can measure this guy between a blue and, and a red and this guy between the last blue and the red. And we can measure them in both directions. We can do the same thing based off of our green wire and uh, access all three of the lower diodes. So anyways, from this drawing, you can see that we can access every single one of these components individually from the wires that we have exiting the rectifier. So that's what we're gonna do now is actually hook it up on the bench and measure it with a meter and we'll test all these guys in both directions and see if they measure correctly. 
All right, so let's actually test a rectifier now. So um, what I'd really recommend is you download our troubleshooting flow chart from the RM Stator website. It has this chart that I've drawn on the whiteboard here. It has uh, it in detail and you can print it out and have it with you at your bike or with your regulator while you're testing it. Um, so I just have it here. We're gonna write in our test results as we test each uh, step. So uh, the first thing our chart says is to go from our multimeter red wire to our battery positive. Our battery positive is the red wire on the regulator. And then our meter black wire is going to go to each of the three stator wires. And my chart says I should be getting an OL or a, or a 1, um, indicating uh, um, nothing in that direction, um, on my meter. And I do on the first one. So I'm going to go to my second stator wire now. Same thing. And my third stator wire same thing. Okay, so that's good. That follows the chart. I'm going to write an OL even though my meter says a 1, but same thing. And I feel like most meters will say OL, so I'm going to leave that here on the chart. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the next section of the chart. I want to test uh, my meter red wire to the battery negative. Okay, so I'm going to take my red wire from the meter and connect it to the green on this regulator, which is battery negative. And then I want to take my meter black and go to each of the three stator wires. So I'll pick one. And my spec is 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 volts, depending on, uh, on your meter and what regulator you're measuring. So here I'm getting 0.554, so that's just fine. I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, 0.547, that's good. Next one. And 0.496, so that's good as well. So I'm going to write in my numbers here. And 0.54. Okay, so now we have tested one set of diodes both directions. Let's go to the next. So I'm going to take meter black wire to the battery positive. Okay, and then I'm going to take meter red wire to the three stator wires, and I should be measuring a voltage on this test as well. Okay, 0.557, that's good. Number two. 0.568, that's good. And next, 0.494. Okay, I'm going to write in my... 0.5, 0.5, 0.4, since, of course, I don't remember the exact numbers anymore. Okay, last section. We're going to go from meter black wire to battery negative and meter red to each of the stator wires, and I should get an open in this direction. And I do on number one. I do on number two. And I do on number three. So I can write that in as well. Okay, excellent. So if you remember from the drawing we looked at previously, now I have tested all six diodes in the rectifier in both directions and I got a voltage drop or current flow in the forward direction and I did not in the backwards direction, which says that the diodes in the rectifier are doing exactly what they're supposed to. So now you know how to bench test the rectifier, um, make sure you check out uh, the next section of the video which shows you how to actually test the regulator function and uh, we're gonna be doing that on our test bench which will simulate you actually testing that on your running motorcycle. Okay, so here's how we would actually test a regulator on the vehicle. Um, now, obviously, we're not on a motorcycle here. We're using our test bench, but the process is the same. So you want to do your rectifier testing first, which we just covered, um, and then you want to test your regulator. So your, um, what you're testing for is at the regulator is to actually measure... Um, battery voltage and see that it is regulating correctly. That means we want to see the battery voltage rise as we increase RPM in the motor and then we want to see it limited to the correct voltage which for these type of regulators is about 14.6 volts. It depends on the situation and what kind of load you have on it and how charged your battery is and a lot of other factors whether or not you'll see exactly that voltage but you need to see to know your regulator is working correctly that your voltage is being held down uh, in the right range so around 14 and a half volts or so. so here we're basically simulating the setup on your motorcycle. We have a flywheel and a stator turning over here. Here is our stator connector 
that's running into our regulator on the yellow wires and then we have our battery connections out on the red and the black or green wire coming out of the regulator. So here we have the same connection you'd have on your bike. If you were testing this regulator on your bike you'd actually connect your multimeter directly to your battery terminals uh, and measure the battery voltage. You want to set your multimeter to the 20 volt DC voltage setting. Um, so I have that all set up here and we don't actually have a battery here we're using large capacitors that's why we're measuring no voltage right now so i'm going to go ahead and spin this up and increase the rpm and we'll see the voltage start to increase up to our regulation point and then we'll know that the regulator is working correctly by holding the voltage down so i'm going to spin it up a little bit okay we're getting there Okay, so now we can check our voltage and see that no matter how much I increase the RPM and increase output from the stator, we're holding the voltage down. It's stopping at about 14 and a half volts, no matter how high the output is. So that tells us that the regulator is good. And I'm gonna switch in a load here so we're running more current through it. And we'll see the voltage drop a little bit because I put a large load on the electrical system. If I switch it off, we should go back to full regulation, 14 and a half volts, which we do. So I'll go ahead and turn this down so you can hear me better now. So that's what you want to look for on your uh, motorcycle or ATV. You want to go ahead and connect to your battery and start the motor and then you want to measure the battery voltage and rev your uh, motor up. About 5,000 RPM is a good place to check because that's at about the peak output of the charging system. And you should see your multimeter showing uh, the battery being held to about 14 and a half volts that tells you that it's regulating correctly. So that's how you test your regulator and your rectifier. Hey, we'd really appreciate it if you'd like our videos and subscribe to them uh, and leave comments on the videos and let us know what you want to see next.